I'm Mark Callen, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. One thing that draws people to the saltwater aquarium hobby is that you can take a slice of the ocean from out there and put it right here in your home. Whether that's fish, corals, invertebrates, some mix of those, you can set it up in your house and get a bird's eye view of what's happening on the reef. And at any given moment out there in the reef somewhere in the world, there's fish getting along, there's fish being aggressive towards other fish, there's fish being so aggressive towards other fish that they're killing other fish. It definitely happens in nature, sometimes it happens in your tank. And that's what happened to Jimmy recently. A fish in his tank became very aggressive, in fact, extremely aggressive, which caused other fish in his tank to die. We don't like it when that happens, but it does happen, and we're not gonna gloss over that fact here at saltwateraquarium.com. We wanna educate you, give you the best foot forward to have your tank be successful, and when things don't go as planned, we have to learn from them and adapt. So here's what happened in Jimmy's tank, here is what we learned from it, and here's what I have him doing going forward to help prevent that in the future. Oh, oh man. Come on, Mark, you gotta answer your text. I'm gonna have to resort to the uh, aquarium crisis hotline here. Let me give him a call, I'll put it on speaker so y'all can hear. Crisis hotline. What's your emergency? Oh, dude, thank you for uh, uh, um, answering. So I've got uh, I, I put three new fish in my aquarium, and they're getting beat up. And I've only been doing this for a short while. I'm kind of a newbie. I, I mean, how, what, what do you need to know that, that you can help me with these this, these fish? How many fish do you have in the tank right now? I, I don't even know. I think I had like eight or 10 or something. I just added three new ones. And the new ones are the ones I'm concerned about. What type of fish did you add? Um, one's purple and yellow. Uh, one's yellow. Uh, um, one looks like a possum. He's called, oh, he's called a possum fish. And uh, one, my wife calls him Chiquita Banana because he looks like a banana. Wait a minute, sir. Where are you located? I'm in Orlando, Florida. Does that matter? And what's your name? This is Jimmy. Jimmy? Yeah. I'm in Jimmy Newby Reefer. Yeah, do you watch me on YouTube? I do this show with uh, my friend Mark. I'm Mark. Oh, you're Mark too. Yeah, my friend is, uh, name no, is Mark. I'm Mark. I'm Mr. Saltwater Tank, the guy you should have called first. It doesn't sound like you. Dude, yes. dude, answer your texts or your calls. Let me see. Oh, you've called 30 times and I have 10 unanswered texts. Well, you know, Jimmy, I mean, I was at work, so I got to focus on other people. I'm here with you now. You put new fish in. Did you put the new fish in the Heidi Ho box? In the Heidi Ho box. What is a Heidi Ho box? We filmed an episode with Flora in Australia at Cairns Marine. You were the camera guy. We talked about acclimation boxes, which she called Heidi Ho boxes. Any of this ringing a bell? I remember going to Australia and petting kangaroos and going diving on the Great Barrier Reef. I would hope so. Okay, so you missed the whole Heidi Ho box. What is a Heidi Ho box? Heidi Ho box, acclimation box, when you put new fish into your tank, you want the new guys to go in the box so that they can have a look at the fish in your tank and the fish in your tank can have a look at the new guys in the box so if there's any aggression, you catch that before you set them free in your tank. But you didn't do that, so that's out the window. So we've got three new fish in the tank. We're in crisis mode here. Go get your acclimation box. It's fine if it's from a freshwater tank, whatever. Catch whatever those victim fish that you can Put them in the acclimation box, shut the door so they can't swim out and the mean fish can't swim in, turn the lights off, do that, and then I'll call you when I get back this afternoon because right now we just want to get the victims isolated, turn the lights off to let them chill for the day, and then we'll go from there. The, the lights off in my office or my or tank lights? Uh, definitely the tank lights. If you can turn the lights off in your office, great. We want it to go dark. Okay, and then give me a call, please. All right, I'll, I'll do it. Thank you, drive through. <laughs> Later.
Jimmy, give me the update on the tank, dude. What's going on? Ah, <sighs> so that little purple and yellow fish, can't find it. Um, you told me to turn the lights out, and so I had the lights out all day yesterday. And then today, I can't find that purple fish. It's gone. But the possum fish, um, he was like floating around in there, but then I saw other fish like swimming after him. And that's when I, you know, when I called you, and then I turned the lights out and now he's just hiding. Okay, so the rural grama, the yellow and purple guy, he may be hiding, because those guys hide in the rocks anyway. So if he's getting beat up, then he may be holed up, maybe in the back of the tank somewhere you can't see him. So I'm not ready to write him off yet. The possum wrasse, at least you know where he is. The yellow wrasse, he's in the isolation box. You able to catch him and put him in the isolation box? Yeah, I just, I put my hand in there and, <laughs> and scooped him and put, it, put him in there. Okay, so that, I've seen that happen a lot with fish, especially ones that are getting under extreme aggression or just constant aggression. It's almost like they give up. Like they see you coming, they're like, whatever, take me, get me out of here. So that's good that he was easy to catch. I wouldn't move him out of the tank. I would put him in the isolation box in the tank, give him a place where he's not getting beat up. He can try to recover the possum wrasse who's getting beat up. He is down in a hole. This is good that he's hiding, but as you said, you can't get your net down into him. You're probably not going to catch him unless he also gives up because his instinct is to hide and just hole up. And he's, if he keeps getting beat up, he's not gonna come out. So hopefully he comes down enough, maybe you can catch him um, and put him in isolation I mean, you could go to the extreme and pull out that piece of live rock, you know, take everything off of it if he's at the bottom piece, which is usually how it happens. Pull it out and then you can grab him. But, I mean, that's, that's a give and take. Like, do you want to tear, about the, tear apart the tank, stress everyone else out and stress him out? And just because you get the rock out that he's on doesn't mean he's going to hold out until you get him in the bucket. I've seen fish hold down in rocks. You get it up to the top and then they jump out and you're like, well, I just did all this effort. I tore apart my tank for nothing. So we're gonna have to wait on that guy. Hopefully we can catch him or the aggression can stop because this is something else that I've seen with aggression. Day one, fish is getting beat up. You turn the lights off, things settle down, fish chill out. The next day you turn the lights on and the fish may be like, I'm gonna go back to you again. It's game on, like it was day one. Two, they may be like, ah, I'm gonna push you around a little bit, just kind of shove you and then swim away and let you go. Or I've seen it where after that it's like, they don't bother him again. So we'll just have to see what happens with the possum wrasse. Let's focus on the yellow wrasse who's in the box. You said he had white marks on him. Are these like little spots or are they like patches? I mean, I thought they were little like bite marks, but now it almost looks like patches. But the back of his fin, rear fin too is like chewed up. I'm guessing chewed up. I mean, it, he doesn't look good. Let's leave the lights on. You're gonna be working from home, so keep an eye on the tank. If you see aggression, let's try to find out who it is. Then we know we can look at a plan to handle that. And let's just let the yellow guy chill out. Let's, we don't need to throw any food in there just yet. Just let him chill. Let him try to come back and start swimming around the box. I actually did put some food in there and he did eat it. So that was, I thought, positive. He ate, he's probably exhausted, but he's eating, so that's good. He's in the box, he's safe. Let's just let him chill out. Let's go for the day, see what happens, see if you can find that aggression, and let's circle the wagons again tomorrow and go from there. All right. All right. Sorry I keep texting you, dude. It's a little nerve wracking. I totally get it, man. I mean, these are your children, you've named them. You're and your wife, and you love the tank. You know, you never want this to happen, but we are dealing with fish. and. Sometimes fish that are not known to be aggressive become aggressive or aggressive fish don't become aggressive at all. So we're, you never quite know what you get because we are dealing with fish. We have to be reactive sometimes to see if something's going on. What's the best thing we can do with the circumstances? Well, that's the other thing. I don't have a lot of fish in there and my wife names everything right away. So everybody's got a name. So I mean, that. Uh, so that little possum fish is, she named him Lester. And she's like texting me, how's Lester? She named him Lester after the possum, I don't know if anybody's got little kids, the Goofy movie, 
uh, from the Goofy movie, there's a character who's a possum, Lester, and it's hilarious. And she, she just loves him. She thinks he's the coolest little fish. And she's like, well, how's Lester? And I think she's already written off that, the other purple fish that she named Daphne, out of Daphne from Scooby-Doo. So she names all these things and falls in love with them right away. These guys were in quarantine for you know over two weeks, and then overnight, they're getting beat up. Look, look, sometimes it happens. You, you do the best you can by setting them up to succeed coming into your tank, and then you just have to see what's happening. I mean, you, you put them in, you put them in isolation, it seems okay, then you put them in your tank, and then it can be a totally different ball game. So this is part of it, unless you just stop, you know, adding fish to your tank, which you could do. You know, you're gonna have to just gauge on how the new inhabitants are gonna come in and see, you know, how the community gets along. All right. Let's check in tomorrow and see what you see tomorrow morning. Jimmy, what's the update? Oh, well, I wish I had good news, dude, but sadly, it's not good news. Um, two of my fish uh, are dead, and one I haven't seen since day one, since I put him in there. Um, I keep looking and ho have hope, but it's not much hope. Okay, so one hasn't been seen. Let's talk about that guy first. You haven't seen him in a couple days. He may still be holed up. He may be in part of the tank you can't see. He may be fine hiding in the back of the tank and you don't see him. I've seen this with fish that um, tend to hang out near the rocks like the Royal Grummer does. You don't see them. One day you happen to be back there, you see him or he moves houses and then you see them. So that can happen. And I think you, you sent me a video of a yellow watchman goby. The same thing happened with him. He disappeared, but then you saw him again? Well, yeah. Um, I was doing a water change uh, yesterday and um, all of a sudden, a little goby that had uh, gone missing, um, he's in the same spot all the time. And I could take a flashlight and look at him. And I couldn't see him anymore. And his home had got covered up. And I hadn't seen him like in two days. And then when I went and did my fish feed, like he does all the time, when I'm doing my broadcast feed, a little comes down by his home and he peeks his head out and gets food. And there he was. And he had moved from where I had the little box back to his home. He lives right over here. So that's the, that's the good story. But the three that I put in there, like I said, um, the little yellow fish, I had him in the quarantine and uh, he, he, would, he was going good, going bad, going good. And they just laid there for a couple days. He, I could still get him to eat, but then when I woke up yesterday, he was dead. So he had died. And then the little um, one that looked like a possum, I found him in my power head over here on this side, which was very sad. Fortunately, I can't make fish come back alive again. So what can we learn from this? A couple things. We know the Falco hawkfish is aggressive and this can happen with those guys. Usually it's not to this extreme, but now we know who the aggressor is. In a way, it's good that you see it because now you know who to go after. So at this point, we have a decision to make. Do we not put any smaller fish than him in the tank, especially passive fish that he's likely to go after as you saw? Or do you remove him and rehome him in hopes that the next fish you put in doesn't get the same aggression potentially from someone else. Because I've seen this, we remove one aggressor and the next guy in the pole is like, oh, well, I'm king now, I'm gonna throw my weight around. Probably won't happen in your tank given what's in there. So we've either gotta remove the Falco or manage him by saying we're not gonna put anything smaller than him, certainly anything passive in the tank. What's your thought on this Falco? You wanna to try to keep him? You wanna remove him? What do you wanna do from here? Well. He's one of our favorite fish to watch. Um, so my wife really likes him. Um, we've named him Ethan after uh, Ethan Hawk from, from uh, Mission Impossible. And the funny thing is, I'll even open my Spotify and I'll play Mission Impossible music in my office here while we watch him because it's hilarious. Because he goes from one spot and he like hides and then it's do 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 and then he moves over to another spot so we really think he's a cool fish other than these looks like he killed uh, the the two new residents but i like what you said about um the strategy for adding new fish that maybe i just don't put smaller passive fish in there because right away my wife said 
we can't put small fish in there anymore. And so she was thinking, I mean, that just is a kind of a logical step, um, right? Like, oh, if something's bigger than him, maybe they won't, he won't pick on the bigger fish or something. So I'd like to give that strategy a try, maybe not buy these super juvenile fish that um, we've been doing, so. We know Ethan's an aggressor. The next thing I wanna see in your tank is some tangs, which he very likely shouldn't go after. Let's get those in your quarantine, pick up the pieces and go from here.